What's up guys? It's Sam here from Sham and as I said last week when I was told about my figurines I'm going to talk today about the one thing that I love a hell of a lot in the world apart from my girlfriend because obviously I have to love her but um, you know the one thing I love in the whole world is Zelda and I'm going to talk today about that. I got into Zelda when I was probably about nine. Um, my cousin had Ocarina of Time on his N64 and I played that at his house one day and I was like oh my god this is the best thing I've ever played in my life I must have it and um, I wasn't fortunate enough when I was a kid to have a Nintendo Entertainment System or a SNES purely because I was past that era so I had an N64 for Pokemon I'd, I my mum had bought me Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Snap and and oh my god then I had Ocarina of Time and I couldn't believe at that time it was so graphically intense that it was just mind-blowing I was like oh my god this is the massive area I get to roam around I can do whatever I want in the game of course back then but Breath of the Wild is more to the point of that now so um, I kind of started from Ocarina of Time and I worked on from from there and when I was a kid we had um, we had a little gaming shop and uh, they had the they, they, this blew me away. They had um, a co the, 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 the gold cartridge copy of Majora's Mask in it. It was only 50p and it was in its box and everything. And I had to have it. There was no there was no question. And at, at that sort of era, there was no sort of age ratings or BBFCs and things like that. So I was like, I think I was like 11. And I picked it up and it should have probably been about 15 if it was released now. So I was like, hey, yes, boy. So I had that in my collection and that was that's the only gold cartridge game I have and it's one of my all-time favorites so that's the first ever Zelda game I bought for myself I have bought plenty and more since and um, I would love to have the entire collection of Zelda games but I'm just uh, to be honest I, d I doubt I'll ever get it because some of them are so rare and so hard and so obscure that I don't think I'll ever get a hold of them all so um, if you've seen my video from last week, I do have a vast collection of figurines and I've got more on pre-order. Um, I do have a massive collection of Zelda memorabilia. This hat's one of them. I have an Ocarina of Time hat as well. Take that off now, it's kind of stuffy in my head. Um, I have an Ocarina of Time hat as well. I have um, the, the Link hood. Um, I, have the, I have the figures. I have jigsaw puzzles. I have the manga, of the, oh actually I'll show you that, I have the whole manga collection. The entire collection right there, as you can see, each book is in order, and right up to the brand new one that only came out there a couple of weeks ago, um, or rather a couple of months ago now, um, which is Twilight Princess Part 1. I also have the um, the limited edition uh, pre-order only like loot crate box that Nintendo sent out. Um, it came out roughly towards my birthday, so my mum very kindly bought it for me. I bought one for my little brother as well for Christmas and I had mine for my birthday and it, it is beautiful, it's, it's class, it comes with all sorts of bits that I haven't, <laughs> I haven't touched them because I think they're just so nice, I don't want to touch them, I don't want to tarnish them, I don't want to destroy them because knowing me and my big chunky hands I would wreck them, um, not that I will, not that I on purpose destroy my goods because I don't, it, like, like with my tripod it was a case of my hinge was a bit too tight and I've fucked it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need a new tripod. Um, but no, I call anything that's Zelda related, I have the Zelda Monopoly as well. Um, I would love the chess set. Ooh, I'd like, I don't even play chess. I don't play chess, but I would love that chess set. It's so gorgeous, but I am not paying 120 quid for it. Fuck that. The Zelda Monopoly at 60 quid was a bit steep. But 100, 120 quid for chess. So that's probably the only thing that probably will not end up in my collection. Everything else, though, just seems to end up arriving at my house. Like, oh dear, that's such a problem. What a shame. That's the things that I collect. I also obviously collect the games. As I said before, I would love to have the entire collection of games in my in my set, but I just I don't I doubt it'll happen. Um, I have all the more recent titles, I have both the N64 titles, I have every, basically every game apart from all the handheld games because the handheld games I find really difficult to play not that they were hard, it was that I didn't like the style of them because I'd gone from Ocarina of Time where you were back facing and you were, it was so vast and so realistic for its time that to me that 
that the handhelds just didn't match up and as much as I know that's what the SNES and the NES copies of the games look like I can appreciate that for their age and I can appreciate the the way they were made for their systems it just wasn't for me I did enjoy the DS copies the um, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks but again um, I didn't keep those the only game I couldn't actually get on with on the handheld was B Link Between Worlds like don't get me wrong I have the Figma up there and he's beautiful and the game itself was a really nice looking game it played really nice but I hate it the top down I don't like that view at all I'd rather be able to see the height of everything because then you kind of know where you're going but that's just me and that's just my personal preference um, but I own all bar handhelds I own every piece of Zelda software that's out um, up until the switch I couldn't get a hold of the switch I don't have the money for a switch um, and the, the the Breath of the Wild Special Edition is sat in my Amazon wish list, just sitting there, and it keeps coming up as being available in stock. And every time I see it, I'm like, oh god, I, you know, I could so have you. I have the funds for you, but I just can't have it because it's just it's just so expensive for a system I don't own. It's way too pricey. If I was to go and buy a Switch, and say. I ended up with 110 quid, by all means that thing would be bought and sent to my house the same day. That would not be funny. I just don't have that sort of money. Um, but I own as, as much as I can for what's out. The reason I like Zelda quite so much, it's a form of escape for me. It, it, it's, it's always been there, it's kind of like an old friend. You know, like as much as Pokemon's great, but Pokemon has its limits. And I will go into that in another video, I'm going to do another video about Pokemon. But with Zelda, it's more like an old comfort and friend. Like, yep, I'm always here. I'm always going to be there for you. I'm going to always have an adventure for you that you you don't get otherwise. And that's what I love about the Zelda series is that it is an adventure I do not have in my day-to-day -day life that I would love to have. And for me, that's what draws me in. The story is also fantastic. The whole timeline is confusing as fuck. But it is... Amazing. Like, I have the Hyrule Historia and I have the Arts and Artifacts book and both of them I love but the the way the timeline was done in the Historia kind of threw me off and I was a bit like, what? But there's not a lot I can do about that, that's just how it is. I just, I've grown, I've, you know, I've grown up with it, I've grown to really love it. It's the same with Pokemon, you know, I have, I have tattoos for Zelda, I have tattoos for Pokemon, they're things that I grew up with and things that I grew up enjoying and loving and obsessing over and I know they're an obsession you know it is beyond beyond enjoyment is it is obsession and that's just me I just you know once I get stuck into something that's it I'm set and of course I'm gonna continue to play it I'm gonna continue to collect the shit as much as until the day they stop until they, the day they say I'm really sorry world but Zelda it's no more not only will I probably have a nervous fucking breakdown, but I will continue to play and collect and buy up until that point. And then I will have an eternal mourning and probably build a shrine in my house <laughs> just for Zelda and shit. Speaking of shrines, Breath of the Motherfucking Wild. Oh my lord, what a game! That game is amazing. It's so good. I can't believe just how amazing it is. Every, every time they bring out a new Zelda game, or when they remaster an old classic that I love, it's really sad, but I, I do cry. <laughs> as soon as the story music's there, I'm just like... <coughs> so I end up bawling like a small child. And I don't mind that. Um, but it, as soon as Breath of the Wild, as soon as you did that entrance bit where you run out, and you look over that cliff, that was it. The tear was down. Gone. And my mother's like, I'm going to turn it off on you. <laughs> you can understand. But it is, it, by far, it is the best Zelda game since Ocarina of Time. Maybe since Wind Waker as well. Because it has that whole new, fresh vibe. You know, yes, it's not, it's not like The Last of Us graphics. It's not, it's not like Skyrim's graphics, if you will. But it's Zelda. It's it's just it feels it it feels like a Zelda game that's not a Zelda game. 
because it is so big and it is so side questy. It's, it's so much more side questy than most Zelda games I've ever. All the other Zelda games I played didn't have anywhere near as many side quests to do or things to play with, whereas this one really does. The only the only gripe I have is that shit keeps fucking breaking. There is no need. If you built the thing right in the fucking first place, it shouldn't need to break. Like my tripod. Um, but you know it. <sighs> That for me kind of pissed me off whenever you were fighting somebody and you'd be like, oh, fuck, my weapon's broke, what the fuck do I do? Run! And a lot of the things in the game are far too overpowered for their area. So for example, for the weapons that you have, I thought the um, bubblekins were, were far too overpowered for what they were and you were standing there thinking, because you couldn't kill them off for ages. You were like, Ugh. It just wasn't happening, and it was so it was very very frustrating. Um, and yes, I have died a fair 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 amount of times. But I have to say, the biggest plus on that game is that fucking paraglider. Holy shit! There is absolutely no need for how good that paraglider is. Now, I don't even use a horse anymore. I have two of them. I don't fucking use them. They sit in their stable. I don't care for them. The stable men do that. I paraglide everywhere. That is the most amazing tool and what a brilliant thing to put in the game. Like, you stand on top of the, the tire like... <laughs> Bitch, I ain't climbing down. Whee! And you fly off and it's just brilliant. It's just, it, it really sucked you in. Yes, the story is a bit bland and the story is a bit short and the shrine, the, you know, the, the divine beasts are tiny. I was expecting so much more when they were saying, oh yeah, it's all powerful beast. You know, it's going to do this, it's going to do that. They're fucking easy. Yes, the boss bits at the end aren't so easy. If the order in which I would do it, and if you want an easy to difficult playing, is you do the Ritter one first, him, then the Goron one, then the, the, the Gorodu one, because the Gorodu one is ridiculous. It's so difficult. It took me forever to do. And But I have to say, I do miss a proper proper dungeon. I miss being able to explore a proper dungeon and find all sorts of treasure in it and find all sorts. Don't get me wrong, the shrines are lovely and they're such a nice change to the Zelda game. It was, it, this game was very refreshing. It was so beyond the norm that it was well. It was really nice to play. So it's a beautiful game to play and I still have not completed it. But I have to say I do miss a proper proper dungeon I, but the shrines themselves, the little shrine things themselves are class I do think they're brilliant, they're nice, short, sweet, fun yes there are 120 of them which is extortionate but at the end of the day, it gives you more options it gives you more more reason to keep playing for so long I don't know how many hours I've clocked on it but I do think it's the best thing I've ever played you know I, I play it all the time I can't get myself off it so that's the idea and um, the reason for this video being placed the way it is, is I'm away on holiday next week. I'm away in a caravan. So if you tune in whenever I record next, which will be in about, probably about a fortnight, I will be talking about being a hypocrite and about social networks and how they aren't, they aren't really social anymore. They're distracting. So, as ever, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.